Hey y'all and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. My name is Jane Corley with PicVisions Media Arts and Photography. If it's your first time here, welcome! Every Monday we go over tips, tools, and techniques in order to become a better post-production artist in Adobe Photoshop. Today's episode is all about glare. Glasses glare, there's so many different ways to do pretty much anything in Photoshop. So today we're going to learn how to remove glasses glare. This image here is of a really good friend of mine, John. We've known each other for over a decade at this point in time, and he's got a wonderful bow tie business. I'm sure you've seen him in my product photography video I did as well earlier on. Check it out if you have not. You can find him on all of his things at Famously Dapper, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. So make sure to check him out if you are into this amazing menswear that he, he puts together. So let's get down to it, these glasses glare. We are going to zoom in with Control Plus or Command Plus if you're on a Mac and locate his peepers. And we can see we've got glasses glare here and glasses glare here. And we're going to want to get rid of that so that he can use this for promotional pieces. Just like any other Photoshop project, we are going to drag our background copy down and we are going to duplicate it, providing a negative that we're going to preserve and then a copy on top just in case we need this negative underneath for later use. So first we are going to check out to see what we've got. We've got the inner eye portion here that has glare and the outer eye portion glare that we have here. If it was a straight on shot, we could always just do a lasso real quick and copy this area of his eye and do a control C and a control V to copy and paste on a new layer. Then just right click and flip horizontal and we could have the other part of his eye over here to work with. But since we have a perspective shot, that is not something that we are able to do. So we're gonna get rid of that layer real quick and we're going to do it the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way is to do a either clone stamp or a color picker. So we'll do clone stamp first. Make sure you select your clone stamp or you can do, just hit S for stamp on your keyboard. You're going to Change the size of your brush using your left or right bracket key. Hit Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and simply just paint over the selection. You can do it at a low opacity you see here or just hit your enter or return button. We can do something a little more serious, maybe a 50% opacity and simply just paint on in that area. Now it may look a little bit rough right now, but we just want to get the majority of the glare out. So just continue to select using your alter option key to select a color. You can zoom in more if you would like as well. Now you don't want to get rid of some of the shadow here. And like I said, I know this looks really rough, but we're going to clean it up here in just a second. You don't want to get rid of the shadow because that's part of part of the image. You want to get rid of only the glare portion. So this green over here where we saw it, that green area and really just smooth everything out. Then we can go in and make smaller adjustments to really blend things in. By hitting your J key or selecting your spot healing uh, brush tool over here, you can absolutely come in and smooth everything out so that it blends nicely together like so. Now this area here, we want to, like I said, preserve the shadow. So let's use I for eyedropper or select it here on your color tool excuse me, your tool panel, select that color. It's going to come down here on your foreground background color. Feel free to select an additional color as well. Maybe the shadow color up here to really blend everything in nicely. So now you have a foreground color and a background color of something that's a little bit lighter and a little bit darker. So B for brush and our opacity is at 50%. I'm going to hit enter or return and go 20%, something a little bit more manageable. And we're on the lighter version of our shadow color and we're simply just going to paint it in like so. Then you can hit X to switch your background and foreground color and paint in this shadowed color like so. Control Z, Control Alt Z will step you backwards if you need to kind of edit undo. I'm going to go down to maybe a 10% opacity and try brushing this gray purple color in just a few swipes just to get a little bit different shadow. Control zero will zoom you all the way out and that looks a lot better but it could be even better. 
So what we are going to do is we are going to eyedropper this lighter color here, B for brush, and just paint in a little bit to smooth everything out, like so. Then X to switch to your background color, make your brush a little bit smaller, and just paint in that shadowed area that may have been lost because of our sponge tool transformations. I'm going to select this darker color as well to make sure that we have a little bit more variation just so we don't lose the shape of his face like so. I'm going to do J for your spot healing brush tool and see if we can get a little bit more cohesion in this area. Now this area right here right at the inner part of his eye what I'm going to do is actually do a lasso selection of this portion of his eye. Control copy, control paste, so control V, and then control T will transform. And we can right click, flip horizontal, and bring it over here and use pieces and parts of this content to make up the parts of the content that we've lost. So you can use the corner angles if you would like to make the transformation, or you can hit your control button and it will actually do a you know, move around of your entire selection. And then by holding the alt or option key and moving to your corners or to your side, you can actually do a warp transformation, flipping it horizontal or vertical just on demand without having to do the right click selection. Then we're going to lower the opacity of this level found right here and zoom in just a little bit. And we're going to create the shape by moving the anchor points to the side at a lower opacity and really just finding where that matches up. Hit enter to set the transformation. Then E for eraser, make a brush a little bit smaller. We're at 100% opacity erasing. I'm gonna go to 20% opacity erasing just so we have a more controlled adjustment. And I'm going to get rid of the places of this transform that I don't want included by doing a low opacity erase on the areas that I don't want included. So we can click on and off the eyeball to kind of see where we're at. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to raise the opacity slightly until I get the look that I want. Like so. I can even come in here and do a merge down like so. Then I can do S for stamp and actually do a stamp selection to fill in the area where it may not be exactly right. So that is one way to fix glare on an eye or on a window pane just by going in and doing detailed corrections with the sponge tool, the spot healing brush tool, your eyedropper tool to select colors, and then by using a low opacity brush tool to make the adjustments. All right, so this side looks great. Let's move on to this side. Control plus will zoom you into the image. You can also hold your space bar down to navigate around the image by just simply dragging it around. So using the same method, S for sponge, Alt to sample, and work your way around the image. I would suggest a lower opacity, something around 20%, even 10% if you want a smaller adjustment. And simply just make your, make your small swipes, continue to color sample from different areas so that you get a different variation of color and tones all the way throughout your sample and you're not telling on yourself by making these samples. Do make sure when you get to the eyelid area just to be very careful about how you draw your line and where your lines come from to make sure that it is a natural shape around the eye. We can always go in and recreate that content to be a little bit more precise. So let's move on to the eyedropper technique. Eye for eyedropper, do your color selection. X to switch to your background color to make another selection. B for brush, we're on 10% opacity. Let's make that more like 20% opacity. Make your brush really, really small because we want to follow this line of this eyelid. X to make sure you switch to your foreground background color. And we're simply just going to draw on that eyelid. Draw on that eyelid to cover it up like so. 
and draw underneath the eyelid just to get that water line all the way around like so now i know that we still have this greeny area right in here but we're actually going to cheat a little bit we're going to cheat a little bit i just wanted to get a lot of this information here so i can get these tones and all of this information correct so l for lasso and i'm going to do a selection of this area here Control c Control v and Control t is the sequence drag this area over like so and we're going to do a few slight transformations on it just to fit the exact perspective we're working with hit enter or return to set it e for eraser and you can even move down this opacity lever here if that makes it a little bit easier to blend everything in like so to really get the look that we want bring that back up control zero excuse me we'll zoom out looks great got rid of that glare if you still don't have the look that you want things look a little bit muddled up you can go around using your spot healing brush tool if you would like or simply using your dodge and burn tools to add some cohesive highlights and shadows in the area. If you can add some shadows that overlap your adjustments, it will give the eye more of a cohesion. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do the Control Alt Shift E as in everything to do a sample layer of everything underneath so we got everything all in line together. Using your dodge or burn tool, you can always just add those pockets that area back into the face we are on a high opacity of 20 percent on a burn tool so let's go ahead and just move it down to five just so we have something a little bit more manageable to work with and we're going to add some of these shadows back into his eye sockets to give more of an authentic look we're a little bit hot on this highlight area up here so we're going to calm it down just a little bit just so it's less distracting then you can always select on the dodge tool and add a few cohesive highlights in, you know, in his eyes, in the unders of his eyes, just to give that natural glow, natural joy back into his eyes if it's been lost through clone stamping and all that. So let's take a look at the before and after of our work before and after that looks really really great make sure to leave in the comments below any tips or tricks you have for your fellow post-production artists on how to remove glare from portraits from landscapes from whatever you're working with if it involves glare we'd love to hear it in the comments below make sure to like this video if you learned something new subscribe and ring the bell if you have not done so already so you do not miss any new videos that come out every monday on photoshop post-production Today we went over the lasso tool, we went over the spot healing brush tool, we went over the clone stamp tool, we went over the eyedropper tool, paired with the brush tool, the dodge and burn tool as well, playing with the exposure of not only the dodge and burn tool, but also the opacity of the brushes and the opacity of the layers. So if you have any questions on this video or if I left anything out or you need a little bit more instruction, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear from you and help where I can. Look forward to seeing you guys next week. I'm Jane Corley with Pick Visions, Media Arts and Photography. See you later, guys.